Uh, my name is Bryce Higginbotham. Uh, I grew up in a little in a little Cajun town at Church Point. Um, I was the only child in my family, um, but I was blessed that my dad has five brothers and sisters. Um, so I got a, I was really blessed growing up uh, to experience like my aunts and my uncles um, and my cousins uh, who really introduced introduced me to family life um, and and just the love the, the love the love that comes in families. Um, I went to Catholic El Catholic elementary school. Uh, I went to public school for high school. Uh, after I graduated from high school, I went to UL for a year. Um, I thought that I was going to be an engineer because because I want to make a lot of money. Um, and God quickly purified me of that. Uh, thanks be to God. And so I decided I was going to be a teacher um, because I because I wanted to help people. Um, and then but then uh, I felt the Lord in that one year I spent in in college at UL calling me to go to seminary. Uh, and to become a priest. Um, so I, I transferred to St. Ben's and received my bachelor's degree from there. And now um, I'm blessed to be at Notre Dame, uh, getting ready to receive my master's degree in theology. And please God, more importantly, uh, approach our nation through the diaconate and the priesthood. I've, I've visited every parish in, in Home and Dividend. Um, I've been to everyone, and every everywhere I go, um, a lot of a lot of things change. They do things differently. The, the the church looks different. The people have maybe like some different customs or things. But the one thing that doesn't well, I guess two things that don't change. One, Jesus doesn't change, and Jesus Jesus is there in the sacraments, especially in the Eucharist. Um, and the other thing that doesn't change is the people are just just nice. Like everywhere I go, I feel welcome. Uh, like as if as if I'm part of the family. There's this this Cajun this Cajun hospitality, oh that's that's beautiful, uh, and that 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 hospitality. Like if we're open in our hearts to other people, uh, if I'm ex as I'm experiencing like that welcome from everybody here, that's also an opportunity uh, for us to encounter Jesus in each other, uh, and then open our hearts to receive Jesus when we go to prayer alone, when we go to mass and receive the Eucharist, when we go to confession and receive His mercy. Um, so like, that's, that's the thing for me. That's, that's what I love, my favorite part about being down around the bayous is the people. They're so nice. They're so wonderful. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just excited to be here. When I think about my spiritual journey and um, how I've grown in relationship with Jesus, I, I really I think a, a quote from Pope Benedict kind of frames it well. Pope Benedict said um, that the Christian life is not the result of an ethical choice or of a lofty idea, but of, of an encounter with a person. And so all my life, I was always like the good kid in the class. So I was, I was most of the time making ethical choices. I was trying to, trying to do the right thing. Um, and sometimes even I felt like a real desire uh, to help people, uh, to you know, I wanted to help the people in the class to, to succeed. Uh, sometimes um, I thought about maybe being a priest and how I would like preach to the people. Uh, sometimes I thought about being a teacher and how I would teach the classes. And you know, there was there was in my heart then some um, ideals like, man, we could we could do good work. I um, mean, I want to do the right thing. Um, but it took me a, a long time uh, to encounter the person of Jesus. Um, you know, I would encounter him in, uh, in the Eucharist. I would encounter him in other people. I would encounter him uh, when I would go to confession, though that, that wasn't as, as frequently as it should have been. Um, and so I was just kind of kind of trying to do the right thing, live life on my own. Well, I went to high school, uh, and I had a, a, rough, a rough freshman year. So, uh, and I hadn't been in confession at that point, probably in like, I don't know, four years, three years, something like that. So um, I was... It was the end of my freshman year. I was I was talking to a girl who, who I was attracted to, and we were just talking about life. And uh, she's very strong Catholic. Uh, she was a sophomore. She's on the dance team. She's great. And she says, uh, "Bryce, you need to go to confession." Said, okay. Um, so uh, thanks be to God, I listened to her. And that Saturday, I went to confession. And as I knelt there behind the screen, said all my sins. I heard Father say, well, what Father always says, I absolve you of your sins 
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I don't remember any advice that Father gave me in that confessional. I don't remember what my penance was. I don't remember any of that. Um, I just know that that day I chose to live for Jesus in a new way and that my sins were forgiven. And ever since that day, um, my life has been changed. Now, I didn't realize that at the time. Um, I didn't really feel or experience anything that day. Um, but something happened. And so I began to pray more. And I, I began to pray really consistently uh, every, every day, uh, twice a day at least, in the morning and in the evening. I began to go to Mass a little bit more. I began to go to Bible study. And so I started to grow in relationship with Jesus. So my, life, my spiritual life wasn't just about ethical choices, doing the right thing. It wasn't just about lofty ideas, like uh, for me, thinking that I could do this or that good for people, but it was about knowing a person. And then, uh, as, the years went, as the years went by, I found a, a great spiritual director who helped me understand how to pray and how to read the Bible and listen to Jesus how to take passages from the Bible and then take time in silence and listen to what Jesus was saying through my, through my emotions, through my thoughts, through my desires, through the, wor through the words on the page. Um, that was right after I graduated high school, before I entered seminary. And ever since then, really, the spiritual life has just been, uh, most of the time, a growing of that, an expansion of learning how to hear Jesus in His Word, in the Bible, in the liturgy and the, the mass and all the other beautiful rites that the church gives to us and just in the silence in that uh, and, and, re and receive his love for me. Um, so that, that's, that's, that's really been the thing, being close to the Eucharist, being close to confession and always taking time with the word of God and with silence. Um, So after, after I went to confession, uh, I had that experience in confession when I was a, a freshman in high school, and I started to pray more and pray very consistently. Uh, and then especially after uh, my spiritual director taught me how to pray with the Bible, how to read the, read the Bible and listen, and listen to Jesus speaking to me in the silence, I just, I wanted to do, or I thought I wanted to do, whatever he wanted me to do. I said, Lord, like, like Lord, show me the way. As I began to fall in love more with a person, as we began to encounter Jesus, um, I, I wanted I wanted to be with him, and I wanted to, I wanted to do his will, uh, and I wanted to uh, to go to heaven and to start living the graces of heaven like on earth. Um, so, but I was I was scared. Um, I, I was I was scared of celibacy. I didn't always believe that uh, Jesus Jesus was gonna was gonna provide provide for me the the companionship and, and the intimacy that I desired. So. Um, so I kind of ran away. I kind of was kept like going to seminary and the idea of being a priest kind of at, at arm's length, so to speak. Um, but it came to be that as I was falling more, more in love with Jesus and as I was trusting more and more that he was going to provide for me, when I would go to pray and when I would read the scriptures and take time in silence, like all he wanted to talk about was me, me going to become a priest. And slowly but sh slowly but surely, I began to realize that that's how he wanted to make me happy. That's how he wanted to fulfill fulfill the desires of my heart. And even though like I still didn't really want to be a priest and I didn't really understand like how he was he was gonna do that for me, like without a wife and, and without children, like I was growing in a relationship so I could trust that God was going to provide even though I didn't even though I didn't understand. So, um, when I was finally convinced that God was asking me to go to the seminary uh, to discern in a very formal and intense way uh, a call to priesthood, I decided, I said, okay, I'm going to do it, but Lord, I do not have that desire. And so, uh, if you're really calling me to be a priest, I know that desire somewhere like deep in my heart, and I need you to, I need you to raise it up for me. So I'm going to do it, I need you to raise it up. So I applied to seminary. Um, I was soon accepted, uh, thanks be to God, and probably about two weeks after I applied, I first felt a desire to be a priest. 
Um, or I guess I first again felt the desire. I had the desire when I was little. I had ran away from it so much. I first again felt the desire. Um, then, then I, I went to seminary, and uh, seminary was uh, probably the best and the hardest thing uh, I've ever done or I'm ever doing, really. And uh, I began to, to, to study the things seminary and study and to do the things there. But pretty soon, I had a summer assignment. So during the summers, the seminarians all go back mostly to the parishes around here and live with the live with the priest and work with the people and do kind of like the things the things that the priest does. And the more time the more time I spent in the parish around the people, following following Father to to go to the hospital or in the office or to teach classes or especially serving serving mass uh, and helping people to grow in the spiritual life. As I move further along in the seminary, I was able uh, with permission to do a little bit of spiritual direction and some pastoral counseling. and So, so people would come to me with, with, with their struggles and with their pain and by God's grace, I was able to pray with them and give them some advice and, and I'm able to, able to help people know God. And at the same time, I'm growing in love for God because I'm, uh, thanks be to God, being faithful to making my holy hour every day, to receiving the Eucharist, to going to confession, to all, to all the prayers. Uh, so that I can grow closer to God and bring the people closer to Him. And so the more I did that, the more I stayed close, really, uh, to, the, to the two commandments, uh, the two greatest commandments, in the way that, as close as I can, a priest does it, to love God and to love neighbor, the more that desire for priesthood grew in my heart. I mean, today, like, I, I, I couldn't see myself doing, any, doing anything else. There's just, like, no, no, no other option. Um, and that's what's exciting for me about going forward to 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 better to better serve the people of God to be close to the altar as a deacon and then as a priest to be right there like when the body and blood of of Jesus Christ is it's there when the bread and wine becomes a body blood soul and divinity of Jesus to be so close uh, to be able to be able to uh, preside for adoration to bring the Lord to people to, to see him to adore him to receive his healing um, to help, to help people as a, later, please God, as a priest in confession, to forgive sins. Um, that, that's, that, that's what I want to do. And that, that's what makes me so excited. Um, to please God, like someone said, uh, to bring the people to God and to bring God to the people. Honestly, the first word that comes to mind uh, when I think about my experience in seminary is hard, like really, really hard. Uh, Father Mark said one time that, you know, you, you want to be a priest and you want to bring people to God and God to the people and all that stuff. And then they send you off to a monastery to study philosophy. Like, that's, that's, that's not easy. Um, it's, but the seminary, um, well, it's supposed to be hard because it's a, it's a time of training. And it's also a, a time of dying. You know, we have to, if we want to be saints, for, forget about being priests for a minute, if we want to be saints, like we have to put to death uh, those, well, St. Paul says it, right? Put to death the deeds of the flesh. We have to uh, be transformed by the renewal of our minds. And that's hard. We don't, as, as fallen human beings, like we don't like to change. I don't, I don't like to change. And so I go to seminary and uh, God says, all right, here is an intense eight years of getting you ready um, to take care of my people. Here's an intense eight years of getting you, getting you ready to take care of my bride, the church, and to be a spiritual father. And so, so let's go. And the church, in her wisdom, she gives us, like, she gives us a program. She tells us in general what we're going to do for those eight years and sends us to the seminary and the, the priests there and the teachers and everyone else, like their job is, is to help to form us, to help to you know, chisel away those parts of us that aren't of, that aren't of the Lord, or to put us into the refiner's fire like a guy talks about in Malachi, so we can be refined and purified so that we can offer the sacrifice, so that we can offer the Eucharist, so that we can forgive sins, so that we can, well, again, so that we can bring the people to God and God to the people. So a uh, hard but worth it. One of the great things about seminary, though, is the brotherhood. So at this at at uh, St. Ben's right now, I think there's like 
almost 140 men uh, who are there all pursuing the same goal. At Notre Dame right now, there's about 120 of us. And we're all there pursuing Jesus. And some people, or some of us are like super sure that we're, that we're going to be priests. That's, that's super duper clear. And other guys are like not sure at all. But, they, but those guys have taken a courageous step and are continuing to take courageous steps to say, I am going to give this time to discern really intentionally, really intensely, if God is calling me to be a priest. And I'm going to prepare as if he is. Because I know that whether God's calling me to be a priest or not, that he's calling me to be a saint. And at this time in the seminary, and this uh, seminary just means like seed bed, right? It's a place where uh, like plants, the seeds of our faith, are nourished and are watered and, are, and start to grow. And then as they start to grow, are pruned. Um, so it's a, it's a time of formation. It's a time of death and a time of growth, of growth into new life. So uh, as we all do that together, as like we all journeyhood, like as brothers, it's like brotherhood of disciples, um, pursuing holiness and uh, pursuing priesthood, then that, that part is absolutely beautiful. Um, another beautiful part, uh, especially, um, so first, when we first enter seminary, we study philosophy and we get either a degree or a certificate in, in philosophy. Um, and we do that so that we can have the language to talk and to think about theology. And so uh, after, and frankly, philosophy is usually more difficult um, because, well, it's not usually what we're super passionate about. It's just the means to study theology, to know God better, that we might love, love him better. So after we, after, we, after we work hard through philosophy, and for a lot of men, that's a big, that's a big struggle. As we work hard through that, then we get to use it. Then we get to see its fruit in studying theology. And that, that's another, that's one of my other favorite parts. Probably the brotherhood and the study of theology, like my favorite parts of the seminary. We have some of the, uh, at Notre Dame where we study theology, we have some of the best professors literally in the world. Uh, we have, and those professors, not only do they know a lot, but they pray and they are holy. And so um, that, that helps me. That helps me not only to know how to like, teach people about the faith, but know how to help people to live the faith and to pray and to come closer to Jesus. Because being a Christian isn't the result of lofty ideas about theology either. It's the result of an encounter with Jesus. So we come to know Jesus that, me, that me, we might love him better. So yeah, seminary is really hard. Uh, it's really worth it. Uh, and two of those things that are particular gifts that really help make it worth it is the brotherhood, as we rejoice together, as we call each other out when we're doing wrong, as we you know, sometimes cry together and go through the sufferings together, and the, the study of theology, where we learn, learn more about Jesus, where we come to know him better, that we might love him better and help others to do the same. Some ways, uh, what, what can I what can I say that ha that I haven't said already? You know, I'm, uh, today, like as, as we shoot this, um, I'm 57 days away from diaconate in our nation with God's grace and holy perseverance. Uh, 57 days away I'm from let's speak from getting married and from giving my life for giving my life totally and completely uh, to Jesus and to and to His church, and that's. That's really, that's really exciting for me um, because like God doesn't change. God has been calling me my whole life to be a priest. God has known from all, from all eternity uh, that I'm going to be ordained a deacon and I'm going to get to serve this, per this particular year, this back half of the year of mercy and into next year as a, as a deacon of his church, as a servant uh, for, for the people of God. I've been in seminary for like seven years now, uh, pre preparing just for that, preparing to, uh, to say it again, to, to bring the people to God and to bring God to the people. And really, that, that's, what I, that's what I'm excited about. You know, I don't know, I don't know what I'm gonna be, I don't know what I'm gonna be doing. I don't know if I'm gonna be visiting the hospital all the time or teaching Bible studies or doing youth ministry or working in the office or I'm sure I'm going to do a little of all I'm sure I'm going to do a little of all of that but uh, part of me says well 
Like, I don't care. Because wherever I go, like, I'm going to encounter God's people. And uh, as, I, as, I walk, as I walk around, please God, not just by how I'm dressed, but please God by how I act, people might see Jesus. And whether I'm at Walmart or at the church or on campus or whatever, like if I can, I just want to be like an instrument of his mercy and of his love. I want to walk around and show people Jesus. So yeah, yeah, I can do that in the seminary. Like please God, we'll be uh, as brothers, as a brother, please God, we'll be showing Jesus Jesus to each other. Um, but seminary is not meant to be permanent. Like we're all we're meant to go to go out and to share the, the love of God with us. Like St. Paul says, the, the love of God drives us forward. Or the love of God, Jesus' is charity, the charity of Christ urges us on. And so, um, thanks be to God, his charity is growing in my heart a, a little by little. And, and pray for me that it will grow more and more and more, please. Um, and I'm, I'm just excited like to come, to come share what I've received and also, also to learn. You know, as I, as I, every time I get to spend a little bit of time in the parishes, and I learn so much. I learn so much from the people there. I learn from like the, the excitement and the joy of the young people. Um, I learn from the, the struggles of especially young families, like moms and dads with little kids, like trying to trying to figure out life and just make it, uh, and trying to be holy while they do it. I learn a lot from the wisdom, the great wisdom of the old people. Um, I learn a ton from the priests and from the deacons and from the off and from the office staff. So I'm excited about like what I can come and give, what the Lord has blessed me with, with all these all these years of training uh, and all the graces. Uh, but I also look forward to uh, what I'm going to receive. Like in other words, that's go- that's going to be mutual. You know, it's it's not as if um, I'll be like this guy coming in just to to lord over. Peter says. St. Peter says in the Bible, don't, don't lord it over, right? But we can, if we can be uh, mutually building each other up in love. And that's, what hap- that's what's happened every time I've ever been in a parish. And so, uh, yeah, I can't wait.